so what does this, this outstretched arms that we find in the scripture, what does this really mean? Right? The outstretched arms. You understand that he saves I and I with that outstretched arms. So we had began first with Exodus 6 and 6, and then we touched on the Assyrian, right? That was the Assyrian, right? In Egyptian guys, you know what I mean? In Egyptian, it's almost like today we have people from all over the world, and they say, I'm American. You know what I'm saying? I'm American. Even though their culture, their world philosophy, every ideology is from somewhere else, but, but it's easy for them to say that they're American, you understand, so they could become part of the government, you understand, in certain groups, and they can oppress a certain group because that particular group, you understand, because of spiritual warfare, and that's how what was happening to the Beta, Beta Israel in Egypt. It, it was not the so-called nominal Egyptian, as many people um, think or, 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 um, or believe. Now, we have in 6 and 6, 6 and 6, wherefore, um, Exodus 6 and 6, wherefore I say to the children of Israel, wherefore say to the children of Israel, I, Yahweh, he who is who he is, you understand, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. You understand, like saying from under the burden of the American, that, that system of things, right? But we know that it was the Assyrian within that system. You know, and when we can get into that, we'll recognize what it means by their bondage, their misinterpretation of the spirituality. It's like a lot of black folks are in bondage to Caesar Bogiers and been in bondage to that. You know, and in the very same way, the whitewash, the misinterpretation, you understand? And therefore, it keeps them earthbound and heavily burdened in their soul. And I will rid you out of their bondage, their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Now, I want you to recognize that the stretched out arm is Yeshua on the cross. The stretched out arm. It connects also with um, uh, John's uh, Gospel, chapter 3, verse 14, where, where it speaks about that the Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses, our great lawgiver, Mashu, Musa the head of the fraternal order of the the Islawian or the or the the specifically the Lewawian, the Levite, as he lifts up the brazen serpent. You understand? That is lifting up the true the true um abstract of Yeshua. You understand when we speak about him as being one of I and I. You understand? Because he came on a DNA rescue mission as well. To rescue that DNA, that, that melanin, that black dot. You know what I'm saying? that black dot had become despiritualized like many Negroes. They may be black and beautiful. You understand? But you can see that there's a demonic superimposition. You understand? Know and they need to be freed. You understand? Know they need to be freed. But they can only be freed if they make their wills obedient to good and food. They receive Yeshua in spirit and truth. But we are important. In that, in, that, in, in that mission, in that rescue mission, you know, that all these other things that we may focus on, you know, and putting out there as Rasta or Rastafari, the main thing is the gospel of the King of Kings. You know, but they say that the cross, right, is foolishness, right? It's foolishness to those who are perishing. So people talk about, oh, the cross, oh, how could he die? And, oh, he died for, uh, I, don't, I don't know why people still, you know, all these kind of cock and bull. And cloak and dagger kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, getting into debate, you know, or being baited into issue, so forth and so on, to wear you out. That, that's to wear you out, you know what I'm saying? That's to really set you up for the, for the, they said the physical beatdown or the physical enslavement. But first you break the spirit. This is like, like in Kung Fu movies. I'm not saying this a lot, but in Kung Fu movies, the guy goes, hey, yeah. You know, and he says it so loud, and, and the other person gets nervous. But if you are a master, they hear that, and they're like, just say, come on, bring it, bring it, you know, whatever. Because they're not paying attention to that, not to the distractions, because they are firmly rooted and grounded on the rock. You understand? On the firm ground, that rock, and that rock is Christos. And for I and I, it's the Rastafari order of the Church of Christ based on the teaching of Kedamawi, Haila Shalase, the teaching, but each of us has an individual response 
ability. Or at least we should recognize our responsibility. That means to respond to the call of the when gift at the point and according to what we receive. You know, some say, well, I'm waiting to learn more, and then I'll, have, I'll know more, and then I can go out there. But it's like you're not having faith in the truth that you already say you know. You know, so I don't mean you go beyond that, but you have to affirm that. Roger, check. There has to be a check there. You know what I mean? It has to be confirmed there. It has to be firm. Because when we go to almana, the word for faith, it means firmness. You know, like trust, like confidence. You know, just like you have faith in the Babylonian system that has proved itself unfaithful and incredible and not credible, you must have faith in the teaching of the King of Kings and his Christ in spirit and in truth. But you have to learn, of course. The learning is very, very important, right? That's why education is the key. So when we touch on this first verse of the stretched out arm, and I know we have the, the car here, and we, t- we segued into Egypt a little bit, the double car, the car double, you understand, the soul double, or the car bar. You know, they call it the car bar. It's not the block square. You understand? Know but it's the cross, and the cross, the unilateral cross, like the like the Lalibella cross or the Rock Hewn Church cross, it does make, and the, and the Orthodox cross, it is unilateral. In other words, it, it is not a sword or, you know, as we see other crosses around, so forth and so on. But there's also the tree and the wood. Now, we're not going to be able to get into that right here, but the beautiful thing is that the Kavr Nagesh, the Queen of Sheba and Oyen Sun Minyalik, it speaks about how the, the wood of the cross, the cross, the wood, it really is a wonderful Turgum. You understand? It's our own, um, I call it our Ethiopic uh, Talmud. You understand? And Talmud from Telemede. Telemede is to become familiar with, to study. You understand? As you become familiar with it. You understand? As you become used to it, as you as you can claim it as your own in spirit and in truth. So the stretched out arm, Old Testament being the New Testament concealed now in the New Testament, you understand, revealing what was written in the Old Testament as we have it right here, that he will redeem us with an outstretched arm. You understand, so Christ is the Savior of our soul, Jesus Christos, Yeshua, of our souls, our psyches. You know, of our psyche. So the psyops warfare does not distract us if we keep faith. Because we recognize what it is. The Holy Spirit shows us what it is and how to overcome it. Word, sound, and power. You know, and these are the great judgments. You know what I'm saying? These are the great judgments. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy has six verses right here. What are the six verses right here? And once again, it talks about, um, let's bring it up full screen. Deuteronomy 4 and 34. Or hath God essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and a stretched out, right, a stretched out arm, and by great terrors. Aren't we living in a time of great terrors? According to all that Yahweh, your Elo, your Elohim, right, our God, Right? did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Now, they say that what happened in Egypt was the same Nibiru event. The last pass of Nibiru was about 3,600 years ago, and this is the same time as the Exodus. How interesting. They've noticed it, and it's coming, and it's coming, and it's here. You know what I'm saying? Even the Ethiopic record bears witness to that. You know what I'm saying? These texts that were known for, for millennia, you know what I'm saying, are only revealed very recently. All right? So it says in, in 5 and 15, and remember, what's remember? Think about this. Remember that thou wast a servant. We were servants. We were slaves. We're here. He opens in and everywhere, right? We were slaves, our ancestors. In the land of Egypt, in this new world order, Illuminati paradigm that's based on an inversion of Egyptology principles. You know what I'm saying? And that the Lord thy God, Yahweh, our Elohim, brought thee, brought I and I, brought we out, us and our ancestors. It's in the DNA. Thence, through a mighty hand, through a mighty hand, a mighty Yod, right? Isn't that Yod right there? Let's go right here. Yod. There you go, Yod. Yod is a hand. The open one. Indicating power, means, direction, etc. In distinction to H3709, 
right, in distinction to the H3709, which is a closed one, a closed hand. So we got to understand the difference between the open hand and the closed hand signal, right? Secondly, use as a noun or adverb in a great variety of applications, right? Applications, spiritual applications, understand that. Both literally and figuratively, both proximate and remote, as follows, both close up and at a distance. You understand? So his hand can be felt from close and from a, a distance. Now, it's interesting what we have right here. Um, because we want to check out the 37, the 3709. Let's look at the 3709, um, right? The 3709. Let's see if we can go, go down here and look at the 3709, right? And let's see. It's the cough. You see that? The cough. The cough is the closed one. Now, true, um, we have the, the Yemen... The, the, the fist, but you have to understand that we're, we're going to touch on that. The cough, the cough is the hollow hand or palm, right? And it says, So of the paw of an animal, of the soul, we're down here, of the soul, and even of the bowl of a dish or a sling. It's the handle of a bolt, like on a door, like a doorknob, right? And it's also the leaves of a what? of a palm tree. Figuratively, it is power. In a figurative sense, it is power. You understand the open hand or the cupping hand, in other words. You are right, or, or, or in that sense of like the, the hollow of the hand, right? In the hollow of his hand. And remember it says, in the hollow of the hand, he shows his might and his power in Habakkuk. Remember Habakkuk, need we go there? Yeah, the, the Spirit wants us to go there. The power, and we show his power in his hand. Let's look at power and hand, and we're going to go to Habakkuk, right? The pro prophet Mbakom. Mbakom, right? Let's go to Mbakom, right? So Habakkuk right here has one verse, right? One verse right here. Then it's Habakkuk 3 and 4, right? And here's what it says. And his brightness was as the light. So he is a true luminary, right? He hath horns, right? It says horns, but not those horns, the karen, right? The horn, the flash, the coronet. Then it says power, figuratively power. An elephant's tooth, remember the elephant's tooth, the ivory tusk, Ethiopia connection. A peak, right, of a mountain, a corner of the altar, a ray of light. Right? He hath horns coming out of his what? Hand, right, out of his yard. Right? Out of his yard. And there was the hiding of his power. And there was the hiding of his O's, his R's. You see that R's right there? R's. Like the Wizard of Oz, right? Strength in various applications. Force, security, majesty, and praise. Now, when re regarding Kadamawi Haila Shalase, regarding his imperial majesty, we see all of these, right? We see all of these made manifest and relevant, right? Let's let's see if we can bring up that that picture with um with uh, Nixon. It was a it's a kind of a small picture. Let's see if we can get it. The picture with Nixon again, where he is showing the 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 hand sign, right? The hand sign of of of, of peace. Okay, saying that. We have a couple of windows, too many. So this is China. We dealt with that, but need to return to that subject matter as well, right? So this is this is one, right? This is one, right? And this is uh, let's go to um, all right, let's go to the other one right here. This is Nixon again right here. So we have to close some of these up. Let's see if we can go to. Um, Okay, is it this one? Okay, there we go. The hiding of his power. Right, see this hand sign? Everybody be asking, like, what this, you know, what this hand sign is all about. They say it's a Illuminati sign. You understand? They say it's, it's well, it depends on what they mean by Illuminati. You understand? You're talking about the true luminary? The true luminary, that great son of, 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 of Seth? You understand, of Sate, of that woman, of the Sate, Sate Tio, 
Yensen of of True Holy, it is C2, Ethiopia, the I to C2, Jerusalem. So it says, and in that was a hiding of his power. Now notice that his majesty is one of the first and, and, and really the only. And when we look at the order of revelation, everybody else, you see people doing this a lot on the news, on TV, everybody's talking and they do that and so forth and so on with no comprehension. Because the OTO, you understand, this OTO has tried to also duplicate that. But we want to show you this right here, the hiding of his power. You see that connection right there? The hiding of his power. We're still dealing with outstretched arm, but the arm connects, of course, with the hand. Right, in the hand of the Lord. It says, He is as bright as lightning. You understand? Know He's as bright as lightning. You understand know that our Father, that's why He overstands all that satanic operation and, and forewarned us way ahead of time. You understand? Know A two pronged lightning bolt flashes from His hand. Two pronged. This is the outward display of His power. This is the outward display of His eyes. Right, and they said Oz is strength, but in various applications, strength in the sense of force, strength in the sense of security, strength in the sense of majesty, and strength in the sense of praise, and all of this fourfold application applies to Abba, our Father, Kadamawi, Kaila, Shalase, force, security, Yosin, majesty, and among Ainai, the Rastafari, praise. You understand the strength of his power. So I want to show you this right here. And so just take a note of that when we're speaking about the hand. In Habakkuk, right, or in Bakon. Now let's just bring this, let's continue right here because it's necessary for us to touch on these uh, related verses and give a little more contextual clarity. So the Bible begins to make sense in itself and one can look in Revelation, look in what's happening and really see what's happened. You know, and from John's perspective, not the world perspective, or idiot men and people, you understand, who deny the King of Kings and his Christ. And remember that thou hast a servant, right, in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God brought thee. Remember that thou was, was, excuse me, was, not hast, was, that we were servants, right, just as we're servants now. And even when we're not servants here, we have to remember this, right, to think about this. And that it was the Lord thy God that brought thee out thence through a mighty hand. Right? And remember that the hand was that open hand. Right? Remember that's that open hand. And that open hand, you see this right here? Take Nixon. Nixon can come down right, right here. Right? Through that open hand. See, see the open hand that salutes? You know, over that salute, that open hand. You notice the open hand right here? The open hands right there. You know what I'm saying? And you can even see the sign of the cough right here. This is the cough, right? The cough in the hand, right? Um, and then we also have that 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 hand of Oz. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to say wonderful wizard. Don't let's not go on that level. That's how the Babylonians, and for Babylonian minded people, maybe that's the best way they can try to overstand it to begin with. But we're speaking about Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right, and we're speaking about our Father God, right, Abba. All right, so that's that's a verse right there, and then goes on to say, and with a stretched out arm. So with his mighty hand of the Father, and the stretched out arm of the Son, the Meskalai, right, the Sikalet, Sikaletu Lai. Therefore, Egziavi here, Amlake, Amlakachu, Amlakachin, commandeth thee to keep the what, the Shabbat day, the Sendat day. The Sabbath day, the Shabbat is an intermission. That's an intermission. That's what Sabbath is, an intermission. Right? Um, exactly, an intermission. That the other days, the six days of the week, we're out there getting the wealth, you understand, or knowledge, or whatever corresponds to that wealth that we need in the power that he gives us to establish his covenants. You understand? Know Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 18. And on the Shabbat, we take a intermission. You understand? We, we, we power up. You understand? Or we power down so we can power up for Ehud in the next seven or the next six days, rather, right? As we see our Father do, so we do, right? Um, Deuteronomy 7 and 19. 
It says, the great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders, all these signs and wonders we're seeing in the present time, right? The signs and wonders, and the mighty hand, the yod, right? The yod and the stretched out arm, the stretched out arm, right? And the stretched out arm, we didn't touch on that. That is um, zeroa, zeroa, the arm stretched out or of animals, the foreleg, and figuratively is, is the force, right? Whereby, whereby, Yahweh, Ekaziyahu um, thy God, thy source, Amlak, brought thee out. He brought us out, but first he brings us out spiritually. We have to re recognize that first we have to come out of Babylon spiritually. This is why the gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ of Jesus Christos Getachin, the Tuahe, the Ritua Hymenot, is so very important. So shall Exiavihir, thy God, thy Amlak, do to all the people of whom thou art afraid. Right? To all the people that we think, oh, look, in Africa, they don't like us, they, they're taking the land, they're doing this and that. But we have to get our house in order because his, his mighty hand is still mighty. His stretched out arm is still stretched out. You understand? And he says he would do it, so we have faith. We say amen and amen. We make sure that we keep eye on ourselves, you understand, in the love of God in Christ. You know, that's what we, that's what, that's our part. You understand? He said his yoke is, is easy. His burden is not heavy. You understand? Whenever you see this religiosity putting all these burdens on, on folks and everything, you know that's counterfeit. You understand? Because that's, that goes against his clearly revealed word. It says, yet they are thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by thy mighty hand and by thy stretched out arm. You understand? Remember, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, both in the Egypt, Egypt, and in the root Egypt, Tobia, the Tob, Ethiopia. Hence, Jethro and uh, Sipara, Zipporah, and that whole connection right there. Yosin and the burning bush. So he overstood this symbology. Yosin and said in the latter days, we would fully understand this symbology of the Ka. You see the Ka? The Ka. The Ka. Christ is our what? Head. You understand? He's our head. It says, put on the helmet of what? Salvation. Right? We're speaking spiritually here. You understand? Christ must be I and I head. You understand? Christ must be I and I head. Now, the double cross is actually in alignment. Because we're coming into that time, right? We're coming into that time of alignment. But here Moses is praying, reminding the Almighty these two things. That these are your people. These are your what? Inheritance. Our divine He's our divine heritage, and we are his divine heritage, something inherited. It means abstractly occupancy. That means we must be occupied, the oaks and with the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness is Yeshua, is the Jesus Christos in spirit, the word, sound, and power, and in truth. Yes, he is one of us, and we, according to the flesh, are one of him. But the real, the real uplink is being in the spirit. So this is open to even the Gentiles. We've got to recognize that. You understand? They have to get over all those other kind of mixed-up moods and attitudes. You understand? I mean, for our life and our eternal life. Concretely, it's an heirloom. Generally, it's an estate or a what? Patrimony, right? What, what our Father has given us or a portion, right? Go, go there again. Let's see. Where, where were we? Inheritance. Look at that last, look down the King James Version, heritage. So it's translated as heritage. So you see heritage in the Bible? This is that word, inherit, inheritance, possession, right? Or the nahala, or nahala, nahala, right, in the Hebrew, nahala, right, our inheritance. This is just a stretched out arm. This is the stretched out arm study, the cross. Why the cross? It seems like foolishness with those who are perishing. Just like the careless um, Ethiopians, just like the, 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 the Jews of the first century, our black Hebrew ancestors who, who said they had no king but Keshar, you understand, and said that, well, his blood be upon them, and that's a judgment. That's, that's why when you say, what's up with black people? How come 
why no matter what they do, they try this way, they try that way, Ethiopia is trying communism, capitalism, it must repent. She must repent. And that means all of us. And know ye this day, this is Deuteronomy 11 and 2, know you this day. This day is this day. Every day that is this day is this day. For I speak not with your children, right? I don't speak with your children which, which have known and which have, which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of Yahweh, your Elohim, his greatness. His mighty hand and his stretched out arm. It's like when the um, the careless uh, ministers and Ethiopians, when the revolution or so-called was going on, the great transgression against the King of Kings, they had asked His Imperial Majesty. They had said, um, "Like, what do we do now? Seeing that what we're seeing, well, you know, what do we do now?" His message is, "Pray that that you know, pray the Lord, pray to God that He have mercy on your soul." You understand? It was a little bit too late at that time. Judgments, great judgments, because they had denied that stretched out arm. They didn't recognize that open hand. You understand? They didn't recognize. You understand? Like Bob said, Burhana Selassie, the martyr, one of the first of the Rastafari martyrs, right? He said that if they don't recognize his imperial majesty as I and I, Godfather, as Abba in his imperial palace in Ethiopia, which is the Africans, you know, and them suffer and death. You remember what happened to the Israelites? And then they wander for 40 years. And here we come. Here we, here we are. Here, here, here it goes, 40 years later, right? And the Lord, Yahweh, brought us forth. This is Deuteronomy 26 and 8. He brought us forth out of Egypt. Now, remember, the Bible in the New Testament says that we're in a spiritual Egypt. Do you, you, you recall that? That we're not really in physical Egypt. And we call this Babylonian end time Gentile system Egypt. It's only because of this Masonic secret society, luminous kind of links and connection. And they think that they are Egyptians or something like that. Right? Because the devil is deluding and deceiving them. Now, Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt with a what? A mighty hand. So some things have to be. Because, you know what I mean? Some things have to be the way they got to be. And with an outstretched arm. And with great terribleness, great, you say, great terribleness, and with signs and with wonders. But notice, this not, did not befall the Beit Israel. This not, it didn't even befall the mixed multitude. Uh, so they started grumbling and mumbling and complaining. You know what I'm saying? So we're in a spiritual Egypt. Now, let's go forward to, what is this right here? Um, let's go to 1 Kings 8 and, 8 and uh, 42. For they shall hear of thy great name. They shall hear of thy great Shem. Right? The name is an appellation, a, a, as a mark, a memorial of individuality. You understand? So we don't just say Selassie I or Haile Selassie even, but Kedamawi Haile Selassie or Selassie if you please. You understand? Or His Majesty. You understand? Or the Hashem. Baruchu, blessed be he. You understand? By implication it is kubr, honor, authority in the true name, in the Hashem. Right? Don't take the name lightly, saying Selassie, I, Selassie. Yeah, many of us did it before in ignorance. And may he forgive us for Yeshua's sake for our ignorance. But now we don't have that excuse. It's like Christ said, if I had not spoken to you, you would have had excuse. But now I've spoken to you, you don't have no excuse. You understand character. It's the particular character. Who are we speaking of? You understand? It says down here, it's the fame, it's the renown, it's the name, the renown, it's the report. Who has believed our report? Who, who, who is accepting this as, as true? They think, oh, this is crazy. You're just trying to, you know, they don't know what they're saying, even. But here's what the scripture is saying. For they shall hear, they shall shimma, right? They shall shimma or shama. They shall hear. What is it? To hear intelligently. So the Shama or the Shema, the Sima, what's what I say? Sima, Sima, Sima. Right? Listen. Or Simi to a woman. Or Simu, Simu. Listen. In other words, you, you li I mean, really, hear intelligently. You're, you're listening. Words are going in your ears, but you're not hearing it with the intelligence that God has given you. So when we say Shama or, or Shema, you understand? It is to hear 
intelligently, often with the implication of attention and obedience. So the implication there is not, yeah, 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 I heard it before. You understand? That, that's, you know, that's, that's what you get. You understand? Um, causatively is to tell. It's to tell. Now, it breaks it down here in the various different ways. In King James, you see how many different ways it's translated here? But the root is one and the same. That's why we have to get to I and I roots. Because I and I, Rastafari, I and I is the root. The root and the offspring of great King Dawit, from the blackest Jew that the world ever knew. You understand? And and, and we're speaking of, um, you know, we're speaking of the, the Jesse. You understand? Jesse, you know, the father of, of, of David, of DVD, of, of Dawit, of the beloved, of Tehuti, if you can receive it, right? For they shall hear, that means they shall um, hear intelligently of thy great name. They're going to begin to comprehend, and of thy strong hand, thy strong hand, not just a physical, we're seeing metaphysical signs of Ketamawi, Haila, Shalase, in and through Yeshua, because Yeshua has all authority in this heaven and earth right here. But if you say, well, what about the demons? The demons are still allowed to play out the clock. You understand? But, but, but we should not, um, you know, wait till that tick-tock stop. You understand? Because then it's, it's done, you right? And of thy stretched out arm, 